Welcome to another video of my playlist about reinforcement in Revit. Today we will cover how we can optimize path reinforcement with Dynamo. First we will look at how we can create um, yeah, the path reinforcement with Dynamo. Secondly we will have a look at how we can create alternating um, rebus in our path reinforcement sets and then in the end we can have a look at how we can apply our script to multiple floors, slabs, and on larger scale projects where we actually can save a lot of time. I hope this video will help some of you and let's just dive into it. I already prepared a slab which is modeled as a floor and four columns so that it looks a bit more realistic, but we really want to keep it simple in this tutorial. So to do what we did in the last tutorial um, in Revit now in Dynamo, we need to go to the Manage tab and open up Dynamo, which is here on the right in the right corner. Simply click on it and then it takes a little bit of time until it opens up. All right, so once Dynamo has opened up, we simply click on New and we're creating a new script from scratch. Now, what I tend to do when I open a new or write a new script from scratch, um, the first thing I'm doing is just I'll save it um, so um, that we already have set up the directory path where we want to save it. Um, I'm not going to do this now, but just a tip. Then what uh, what we also should do is we should change it from automatic to manual that the, the script is not automatically running all the time and then also before we can start we need to install a package and that package is called structural design now i have already installed it but if you haven't simply go to package here in the upper taskbar and then search for a package this will pop up a window that looks like this takes a little bit because it needs to synchronize with the internet server and we need to download it from here then. So simply type in the name structural design to design and there we have it and then simply click on this arrow and then install the latest version. Now I have done that already, so I'm not gonna do this. All right, then we can get started. And um, we simply, we, we look for a one node that is creating path reinforcement for us. So we click on structural design, then to rebar, and then we want to create something in Revit. So that's why we create, we click on create, and then you can see some different things that we can create fabric area area reinforcement i have already done a video on that look in the description below if you want to check that out but in this video we want to create path reinforcement now we also want to create something and don't want to um, change anything that's why we cl click on create by curve and shape um, code all right, then we get this node, which is quite a big one and has a lot of inputs. But no worries, I'm gonna walk you through. So the first input we need is the host, host element. Every rebar has a host element. And that is, for example, if we want to include path reinforcement for that slab, then it is this, this floor. So we look for how we can select a element within Revit. Select model element. Then we use this one. Select and then select this element that you want to include path reinforcement. Then we need a curves path. So we need to distribute our path reinforcement along a curve. And for that, we are gonna select um, a edge within a element 
let me simply look for that. So we look for the node select edge. I'm gonna do the same again. We do it along this edge. Then we connect it here. Then we hover over layout rule. That means, yeah, what layout rule we want to use. Um, there's two different options we have, maximum spacing and fixed number. So if we just keep it as it is, then we have the default value true, which equals to maximum spacing, which I'm fine with. Then we have a flag controlling um, the bars relative to the curves. Um, it is also a boolean. I'm quite satisfied with true for now, but I just want to show you guys um, how we can yeah, change that later on. So I'm going to use true, use flip. Then the next one is face. So if you want to have the top face of the host element or the bottom one, I'm satisfied again with the top face. So I keep it. And then we need primary bar type. So in that case, we need a rebar type. Um, now I have a bit of experience. That's why I'm looking in the search bar, but we can also do it manually here um, under rebar. And then I think it's under create. No, I'm sorry. It must be under the properties. We are looking for rebar bar type. So, and that is this node, which you can find here. Simply select one of this drop down inputs and then just connect it to primary bar type. Then we need a shape as well, which we've also find here under the properties. You can find it here, rebar shape. We are using simply the first one, which I believe is a straight bar. And then primary spacing, we can just double click in the user interface um, to get a code block. I want to have a distance of 200 millimeters. Then we need primary number lines. I'm okay with that. And then the bar length, which we can use this code block again. Let's just do it for two meters and then just connect it here. Now this is another option, alternating rebar shapes. We're going to test that in a minute, but I just want to show you what we have created so far. So let's run it. Still running. It sometimes takes a bit more longer um, when you create that the first time. And for some reason, my computer is pretty slow today. And here we go. So we selected this, this curve and we got this path reinforcement. If you select on it, you can see we get the same path reinforcement as if we just created in Revit with all here, um, our inputs, primary bar length. Um, then we also selected the bar type and that is exactly those inputs. Now I'm going to delete this again and we want to create now. First off, I want to show you if we just delete that and we can use different rebar shapes. So let's use that one. And here we go. So yeah, simply what you can do in Revit, you can also do that with Dynamo. Now, next step is I want to show you how you can uh, create alternating rebars. Um, so which is every other rebar has a different shape and also a different bar type maybe. Um, I want to go with the first one again to, to keep it simple. And I also want that for the alternating bar. So I'm using the same inputs just to speed up the process here a little bit. 
Um, now length, I want to have a bit more, like three meters, that we can see the difference. And I think we're good to go. And now we can just simply run it and see what happens. And there we go. Now we created, as I said, two two layers or two sets of rebars within one set actually, which is pretty cool. All right. And the next thing is what I also mentioned in the intro. Of course, we can do that much quicker in Revit probably, but the really the, the benefit of Dynamo is that we can use that script over and over again for multiple levels. And I already prepared more levels to which we can apply the script. And I'm just gonna delete this again. Um, I'm going to, now that we have three slabs, we need more inputs for host element. So we simply look for the plural of that node, select um, model elements. That is this one. Now I'm not sure, I think it's a bit difficult to select that one. Um, let's just isolate those ones. Um, there we go, select, and then it's that one, nice. And now we just connect it to this host element. This one goes a bit away. Same edge, we just need, simply need to put in the bar type again. This one, and now we're good to go and we can run it. and see what's going to happen. And there we go. Now we just multiplied it for three floors. And of course we can also do that with 10 or 20 or 50 um, shapes, uh, floors at the same time. 